Welcome to the Victorious Life TV broadcast. I'm Lisa Boldo, and as always, it is an honor and a pleasure to be spending time with you. So the Lord put an awesome message on my heart for you this week. And so I've got a lot to cover with you, but I'm actually going to be doing this in two parts. And the message that the Lord put on my heart is how to be salt and light in the world around you. And I see you guys jumping on. Welcome, welcome. It's always just wonderful to see your names and blessings, blessings. Oh, you guys are awesome. So again, in this broadcast, I know many of you are just jumping in right now. We're going to be talking about how to be salt and light in the world you live in. So this is going to be amazing. So welcome, welcome. Okay, so I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to be doing this in two parts. Tonight, I'm going to be covering how to be salt. And then the next time I do um, a teaching, I'll be doing how to be light. And this is just going to bless you tremendously. So are you excited? I'm excited. <laughs> All right, we're going to just dive right in. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, it's God's word that's important, not mine. So that's why I give you a lot of scripture because everything I say to you, I've got to back it up with the word of God. It's God's word. It's the truth of God's word that sets you free, not the truth of my word. It's, you know, and, and sometimes I may mix, you know, put an experience in there, but it's God's word that sets you free. It's the truth of God's word that you know and apply that sets you free. Knowing it alone won't set you free. It's knowing it and doing it, putting it into action that sets you free. Glory to God. Okay, so as a Christian believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are all called to be salt and light to the world around us. We're called to have influence, right, for Jesus. We're called to represent Jesus, and he modeled perfectly how to be salt and light because he was salt and light at when he walked the earth and he's still salt and light sitting at the right hand of the father and the Holy Spirit is in you and me as believers. So you and I are to be full of salt and light. Okay. So in Matthew chapter five, verses 13 and 14, this is where Jesus talked about the parable of salt and light. And Jesus said in Matthew 5, 13, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. So, right? So if this, if your salt is not, you know, if salt becomes tasteless, then it's no good. That's what he's saying. It's good, you know, to be, it's not good for anything except to be thrown out and it's garbage and just to be walked over. Then in verse 14, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. Instead, they set it on a lampstand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Mm, glory to God. So Jesus talked both about being salt and light. So we must be both. Okay. So how do you be salt and light? So let's talk about salt first. Okay. What, is, what does salt do? And that's actually what I'm going to cover in this broadcast tonight. What does salt do? And you can, you know, add your own comments if you'd like about what, what salt is, what salt does. Salt gives flavor to food. Okay, we know that. And it's also a mineral that is vital for life itself. So that's awesome. And so when we know that whenever Jesus spoke publicly, he spoke in parables. So in Mark 4, 34 to 36, it says, Jesus spoke to them only in parables. Then he explained everything to his disciples when he was alone with them. Right? So in public, he always spoke in parables, but when he was alone with the disciples, he would, um, he would explain things to them. I love that. So talking about salt, Jesus said in Mark 9, 50, salt is good. Again, right? But if the salt becomes unsalty, with what will you make it salty again? 
Okay, then he gives, he says, have salt in yourselves. And this is how he gives the key right here, how to do that. He said, have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Oh, I'm telling you, this is, this is an awesome message tonight. And just because the Lord wants us to be at peace with one another, and that is how you're going to, somebody wrote preserves. That's right. Salt does preserve, right? And, and think about it. Peace with one another. That's how you be salt. And there is so much in that. And we're going to, we're going to, we're going to dive a little bit deeper because you really need to understand being salt and, and being light. But tonight we're going to cover being salt. Okay. Salty. Just think being salt, being at peace with everyone. I love it. And think about it. Salt preserves. What does it preserves? It will preserve relationships. It preserves. Praise God. I love that answer, by the way, Erlinda. I love it. Okay. Jesus himself is called the Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Right? Talking about Jesus. And the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Okay, so think about this. It's he, it, the, the scripture says that unto us a child is born, right? A son is given, yet he's called Mighty Counselor, which is another name for the Holy Spirit, right? Mighty God, Everlasting Father, think about it, and Prince of Peace. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, they're three in one. That's awesome. Okay. Romans 12, 18 says, if possible, for as far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Okay. Whoa. Romans 14, 19. So then let us pursue peace. Oh, I'm sorry. Let us pursue what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Okay. Let me just break that down. Romans 14, 19. Let us pursue what leads to peace. Well, what leads to peace? right? And mutual edification. First of all, edification is a building up of one another, right? An edifice is a, is a building. It's a tall building. Edification is a building up. It's encouragement. So it says, let us pursue what leads to peace and to mutual edification. So if you are good to people, you're kind to people, right? You encourage people. You are going to have, you're going to have good relationships, and if they're just the kind of people that are contentious, you be good anyway. Doesn't mean you got to hang out, right? Excuse me, I just need to... Mm. Praise God. <clears throat> Jesus said in Matthew 5, 9, while giving the Sermon on the Mount, he said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be, sons, well, they will be called sons of God. Mm. And then right after talking about peace... Jesus talked about persecution. You know, I'm telling you, this all goes hand in hand with being salt, being salt, right? Peace. And I'm going to go through this because this is just, it's amazing. Glory to God. He gives revelation. When you ask the Holy Spirit for understanding of his word, the Holy Spirit will give you light. He will show you. Mm, he'll give you revelation. That's revealed knowledge. From heaven, right? Praise God. So right after talking about peace, Jesus talked about persecution. Immediately in verse 10, okay, I just read you 5, 9. This is the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, if you want to, you know, if you just, if you want to know where it is. Matthew said, I'm sorry, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 9, blessed are the peacemakers for they will be sons of God. And then right after that in verse 10, Jesus said that God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right and that the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Glory to God. Are you a peacemaker, right? Are you persecuted? Listen, the scripture says that all who live godly in Christ Jesus are going to be persecuted. It's just a fact. Jesus was persecuted. You have to remember that, you know, we're never alone in the things that happen to us as believers. Jesus was always talking about how the prophets of old how, how the people just didn't receive them and, and you know, 
persecuted them and even killed, you know, a lot of them and all this stuff, right? Okay. Peacemakers, despite persecution. Mm. Okay. Jesus said, verse 10, God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right and that the kingdom of heaven is theirs. The kingdom of heaven belongs to you. Okay. Then right after that, right in Matthew 5, verses 11 and 12, the very next verses, Jesus said, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Listen, have you ever had that happen before? Because I know I have. Oh my goodness. I've actually even, someone, we even went so far as to take one of my videos from a couple of years ago and they tried to pick it apart with garbage that didn't even make sense on their end and they call me a false teacher of faith and because they have a blog that's on the internet. I don't care, right? If you go, I'm like, Lord, I rejoice because now I'm my name is up there with all these other people that are doing amazing things for God and they're being persecuted. So you know what? Whatever. I don't care. I live before an audience of one and I know that that all I do is help people. Jesus, they called him a devil. They said he had a demon. And that is, think about it, that's like the lowest thing you could ever say about someone, right? So if someone's going to say that about me, Jesus says, rejoice. They called me a devil too, right? Mm, glory to God. He said, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Lies are evil. Slander is evil. Make sure that you're not persecuting or slandering somebody else that is doing the work of God. You know, even if you disagree with them, let God be the judge of that. Because it's, you know, teachers, people who teach the word, we are, we're even going to be under a, um, how do I say this? It, it, it actually says it in the Bible that, that we are, you know, we're under almost like a stricter, um, oh my gosh, I'm trying to think of what the word is. If somebody knows it, just, just put it like stricter judgment, if you will, or not judgment, that's not the right word, but we need to do the what's right because we are, we're teaching the word of God, you know? And so, and listen, everybody's growing, nobody's perfect, but when you do it with a pure heart and you're, you're influencing and you're helping people, to know God, God is very pleased with that. We are to model Jesus. We're supposed to. There you go. Thank you, Debbie. Held to a higher accountability. That's what I was trying to say. See, sometimes people say to me, Lisa, you're so bold and you're so confident. And I think to myself, yeah, and I bumble and stumble over my words all the time. But you know what? I do what I do with a pure heart. And, and you know, even the disciples, right? They weren't educated. They weren't educated men. But, but, but everyone knew that they had been with Jesus. Glory to God. Mm. Listen, God takes the simple things to confound the wise. So praise the Lord. Okay. Sorry, one more drink. I'm talking too much. I don't, I don't know. My throat's a little dry tonight. Mm. Okay. So, okay. So, G so blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. He said, rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven for in the same way they persecuted the prophets before you. There you go. There you go. Okay. And this is another thing. When you teach the word or preach the word, this is, you have to do it from God's word. This is what makes it truth. Okay, a lot of people, you know, unfortunately will put, you know, preach from their own opinions and, you know, experiences and maybe put a scripture in. Well, the word of God is sharper than any two edged sword. That is what that's what's going to set people free. Okay, the Lord showed me a picture. You know, we were just talking about persecution, right? And the Lord showed me a picture when thinking about being persecuted and how the Lord said, rejoice because your reward is great in heaven. And what God was showing me was a picture of you being honored 
you know, like at a table in the presence of your enemies. And it made me think of that scripture in Psalm 23, 5, David said, you prepare a table table before me in the presence of my enemies. Wow. And some translations say you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. Wow. You know, I just want to say something here. God sees every persecution. God sees every wrong or every foul word that is said about you. But what does he say to do? He says, bless those who curse you. Do good to them, right? Who despitefully use you or who who hate you. Just don't be like them. Be like Jesus. Oh, wow. And I'm telling you, I'm preaching to myself here too. The word of God is for every single one of us and it is what sets us free. We are to be separated from the world's way of doing things, right? We are to be wholly consecrated to the Lord. Mm, Okay, this is how you be salt. Mm, Salt and light. Okay, but we're talking about specifically being salt tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Romans 12, 14 says, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Mm, Wow. And again, this is all a part of being salt to the world. And, you know, this is what Jesus said. And you can read all of this for yourself. And I encourage it. Read it all in Matthew 5, verses 9 through 12. Right? And then right after that is... At, right after Jesus did the Sermon on the Mount, talking about, you know, the peacemakers and persecution, he gave the parable about salt and light. Right after that, in Matthew 5, 13 through 16, it's not very long, and it's so powerful. So, another another part of being salt to the world around you is dying to self, because this is the only way that you can actually live peaceably with all men. It's true. You know, I, I've heard it put this way, and it's a, actually a really good analogy, that if if you do, you know, if, if you go to a wake, for example, someone, you know, passes and they're, they're laying there, they're, you know, it, they're not breathing, they've already gone on, their spirit has left, you could say anything you want about that person, they're not going to answer you, right? So I'm just saying, if we die to self, right? Dying to self. I've had so many people say, but you don't know what I've been through. And how do I deal with this person who said this and in-laws and people that hurt me? Die to self. Die to self. That's just the answer, right? Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24 to his disciples, he said, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. He means, you know, when he talks about losing, losing, you know, losing your life, it means putting what you desire to the side and seeking the kingdom of God first, right? Putting God's way of doing things first, aligning your way of thinking up with his way. You're reading the word and you're going, hmm, Wow, I know you're saying to do this, but oh, align yourself. Die to self. Put his word, boom, right there, front and center. Do it. I'm telling you, it pleases him and you can't lose. Praise the Lord. Matthew 10, 38. Jesus said, and anyone who does not take up his cross and follow me, right? Do what I do. Say what I say. Live how I live and how I tell you to live. Love God, love your neighbor, right? As yourself. He said, whoever does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. That's powerful. If we are, we, if we're not following him, we cannot truly say that we are his disciple. Mm. Wow. You can be his child, but you need a spanking. (laughs) Okay. Mm. Children always need a spanking, you know, for the most part, right? Because they have to be taught. Okay. Okay. 1 Peter 2.21, for, for to this you were called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. So you and I, we need to follow in his footsteps. Dying to self, right? This is how you're going to live peaceably with people. D- 
don't hold offense and unforgiveness toward people. Because if you do, you're not dying to self. And that is the opposite of seeking peace, right? Seeking the kingdom first. Be salt. How do you be salt, right? Peace, encouragement, edification, uplifting. Let your conversation be salt, flavored with salt. Let your conversations be beautiful. And, you know, I see my Tony, my friend Tony Jean is watching. That woman knows how to edify. You know, I'm telling you, you, you people stand out to you in your life when they build you up, right? When they, when they, they just have nothing but good, encouraging words for you. So I'm just saying, you know, you, okay. So bottom line, Jesus said, if we want to follow him, we have to deny self. So we know that you hold no offense. You hold no unforgiveness. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. And you know something? This is truly what it means to let the Holy Spirit have his way in you. I'm telling you, when you have that, when you let the Holy Spirit have his way in you, you are going to be salt. You are going to be light. And people are going to be a lot more open to hearing what you have to say. That's glory to God. And that's strategic. You know, God is a strategic God. He's full of love. But he, what does he say? Be gentle, right? As a dove, wise as a servant, gentle as a dove, right? We got to be wise, be full of wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And you have to, oh, this just, just hit me. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Wise as a serpent, gentle as a dove. That's what the scripture says. You know, the world thinks that they're full of wisdom, right? The world's way. And God sits in the heavens and laughs. God sits in heaven and laughs. The earth is his footstool, right? Because man thinks that they're so intelligent and they're not unless they have the wisdom of God, the mind of Christ. And they can only have that if they have the spirit of God. So you having the spirit of God, right? You have to be wise. And you can have, you uh, when you've got the spirit of God and you've got the mind of Christ, you will know. You will know what the world is thinking. So you can already have that wisdom, but the wisdom that you have from God will so much, it, it will just, it will light the path to that wisdom and make that wisdom like, like a, like a nothing. I hope, I don't even know if that made sense, but I hope it did. Okay. Hmm. When you let the Holy Spirit have his way in your life, that's when you're going to see God results in your life, period. If you do it any other way, except for how Jesus says to do things, you cannot be salt. You cannot be light to the world around you. Luke 14, 34 and 35 says, therefore, salt is good. But if even salt, it says, but if even salt has become tasteless, with what will it be seasoned? It is useless either for the soil or for the manure pile. It is thrown out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Okay, so we're going to stop here for now. But I hope you understand this meaning of being salt to the world around you. Live peaceably with all men. Hold no offense. Hold no unforgiveness. Edify people. Encourage them. Build them up. Let every conversation be, be flavored with salt. Be attractive. Be so that... People see the wisdom of God, you know, in you, on you, and they want what you have, which is Jesus. This opens the door for you to speak to them. And listen, you know, ask the Holy Spirit to help you and to give you the words. And you know what? It's easy to be nice to people. And don't just be nice to people that are nice to you, right? The scripture says, if you love only those who love you, what reward is there in that, right? God is good. He sends his sunshine and his rain on the good and the wicked. And he's good to evil people. He, God is good. It's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance or to change their hearts toward him. Glory to God. Okay. And that's what we need to 
let people know and understand. God's not out to squash them like a bug because they did something wrong. God wants to heal them. He wants their hearts to be turned. And you can help them with that just by being salt mm. and letting your conversation be full of flavor and attractive for the kingdom. Mm. Represent your king well, just like Jesus did. Glory to God. Well, we're going to stop here now, but if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you can do that right now. Just pray this prayer with me and mean it with your whole heart. Just say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner and I am sorry for my sins, Lord. Lord, I ask you to be my Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus. I know that God the Father raised you on the third day. You are alive now and you live forever. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and change my life. Make it what you want it to be. Lord, and baptize me with your Holy Spirit so I can be on fire for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I call you Lord and Savior. Woo! Welcome to the family of God. So what's the next step? You know, if you prayed that prayer with your whole heart, the Holy Spirit, God says the Holy Spirit, God sent the Holy Spirit immediately into your heart. That's the Spirit of Jesus. The Holy Spirit, according to Galatians 4, 6, the Holy Spirit has recreated your spirit, which makes you alive. And that is what makes you born again from above. The first time you're born, you know, naturally, but when Jesus becomes your Lord and the Holy Spirit comes in, now you are born of the Spirit. He comes in, recreates your spirit. And the Bible says that he made you, he makes you into a brand new creation, a new species of being that's never even existed before, meaning you, and that your spirit and God's spirit is now one. First Corinthians 6.17 says that he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. Listen, you may not have felt a lightning bolt. That's, don't you, listen, we're not moved by what we feel, right? Or what we see. We live by faith in the Son of God. So now, now what you want to do is get into the Word of God because your spirit's been made new, but you've got to line your thinking up, which means you're going to have to put off some old stuff, get in alignment with God's word, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you and to, you know, open up the scriptures to you so you can understand them easily and your life will start to be transformed. It's only going to be transformed though when your thoughts and your spirit are aligned, okay? Otherwise, there's constant conflict. If you don't know what the word of God says, but now you've been born again, Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you're going to be, your spirit will be like, no, don't do that. But your head will be going, no, but I want to. Eh, eh, eh. And then there's constant conflict where before you're born again, you know, your heart and your mind are like, no, let's just do with the world. You know, let's just sin and have fun and whatever. Right? No. Once you're born again, no. God wants the best for you. He's never, ever trying to take anything away from you. So just know that. I love you. I bless you in Jesus' name. I hope this message has blessed you tonight. Please leave a comment and let me know what you took away from this tonight. And um, and I look forward to bringing the message about being light on the next time I do a teaching broadcast. Uh, I'm going to have a special guest next week. Hopefully the weather will cooperate. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty exciting. Someone who had a permanent brain injury who doesn't praise God. It's going to be so awesome. You've got to hear, hear about her healing journey. It's going to be amazing. And so I love you. I bless you in Jesus name. Make sure that you share this broadcast and let's advance God's kingdom together. I love you. I bless you in Jesus name. And I'll see you next time on the Victorious Life. God bless you.